Hi, this is John Hoffs. It's Tuesday, April 21st, 2020. It's 21 days into the 30 days to slow the spread of the coronavirus. So there's nine days to go. Just nine more days. <clears throat> I have to confess that uh, I've been struggling somewhat with loneliness uh, for the last three days or so and I'm trying to just sort of weather through it um, the fact is I was alone and I don't have visitors I have one person I visit once a week for a few hours and that breaks up the loneliness some. But what I'm realizing is the, the loneliness is oriented towards past relationships and regrets and a pretty big dose of sort of self-pity. And I just want to assure you that you're, you're not alone in feeling this way uh, if you are feeling this way. Um, what I've sort of come up with as a remedy is the concept of dying to everything that's happened before. Dying to the past. The past is dead and gone and there's nothing we can do about it. So dwelling on it only adds the pain. At the same time trying to resist thinking about the past is a futile effort as well because as one person put it, what you resist persists. So if I resist the pain, it'll, it'll persist. If I resist the loneliness, it will persist. Therefore, to die to the past immunizes you from the repetitive uh, loops that you have in your mind where you think about the same people and the same situations over and over again trying to find what went wrong trying to find some solution the solution as I said is, is to die to the past the past being just memories r reminiscences stories and things that are no longer real and what's real what what the only reality is is the present moment and that sounds so I don't know overused uh, in these days of mindfulness meditation and a myriad of uh, practices, spiritual practices that people perform. Um, I say all the power to you all that can do spiritual practices. I choose not to have a formal spiritual practice and to just focus on the now, the present moment. Yes, we're in the pandemic, we're in the crisis, we are suffering with loneliness, with isolation, social distancing. But in nine days, uh, hoping that the cows come home and the creek doesn't rise, this will be all over the sheltering in place. We will be able to go out again. 
let our hair down, kick up our heels, meet new people, form new relationships, all in the in the now of, the, of that moment. This is it. This moment is it. It is the purpose of all life. It is the meaning of all life. This moment is like a pin prick. The end of a pin. And the prick is the little stab that wakes you up to the reality of the now. And as far as the future goes, if ever there was an unknown about the future, it's now. We don't know what's going to happen when things start to slowly return to normal in, in phases, gradually. First, probably, we'll see masks worn in a restaurant, perhaps. We'll see duct tape on floors measuring out six feet or more. We'll see plastic guard uh, windows uh, between workers and customers and we will go about our lives as best we can and as I had said earlier I hope it's a big party I really do I hope not a big party that's gonna put others in danger but a big party where our joy can break through the loneliness and isolation our happiness can be like a child. We could go swimming. We can uh, ride horses. We can do so many things that we don't normally do. And uh, maybe we should do them now. Maybe we should have a second childhood. Maybe it's time to say, you know, the last lifetime that we've lived has really been deeply flawed. Yes, there's the idea that everything is exactly perfect and exactly right as it is. But something can still be flawed, and that flaw, um, flaw can be exactly right and exactly what it's supposed to be. So, with that, I know I'm sounding a little bit downbeat, and sometimes that comes through in these videos, but I always just talk extemporaneously and spontaneously so sort of like you get you get what what you paid for which is zero so till, till tomorrow i will say goodbye and have a good rest of the day